Namaste, good morning, good evening to all the sisters and brothers who have come to attend today's session of Young Indian Theosophist by Indian section of the Theosophical Society. And today is also a very special session. But before we proceed to start our meditation session and some discussion about it, let us all come together in heart and mind and invoke the presence of that immutable principle in which we live, move, and have our being. O oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom, O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature, O oh, hidden love, Embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee. Know they are therefore one with every other. Welcome again to everyone. To today's session of guided meditation in Young Indian Theosophists. And as you are aware that today's session is by none other than Brother Vicente Hao Chin, whose introduction I will be soon sharing. Although he doesn't need an introduction also, just like uh, our president last time. Uh, but still, a, a formal introduction would be Nice for us because I see some of the people who are joining maybe for the first time or who are not with the Theosophical Society for a long time. But before we go to the meditation, guided meditation session proper, just a few words, or other wow. few words to share about this subject. Because although I know that most of you or all of you are already familiar with meditation and many of you most likely be the practitioners of meditation. I am not an authority on this subject as no one can be because it is a very general yet individualistic subject. But as you know, meditation has become such a popular word but at the same time, commercialized term, that it has become like a jungle, a forest, and a newcomer is looking for the path in that jungle, gets confused, get distracted or lured by one of the business houses by paying hefty fees, only to find later that it was not worth it. And this happens because the word meditation has been used to express different things and different people may have different understanding of it. Many of the times we might see the use of thought, thought power is taken as meditation, like sending good thoughts to people, sending loving, loving kindness, send thoughts of joy or compassion. And to convey the idea, such a term is used using our thought power, the use of mind, and therefore too much confusion arises. And if we search Google regarding types of meditation, we'll come across different types of meditation, like Zen, Mantra meditation, Transcendental meditation, Yoga meditation, Vipassana meditation, Chakra meditation, Mindfulness meditation, Spiritual meditation. I was just searching all these through. So focused meditation, dancing meditation, walking meditation, loving kindness meditation, and the list goes on and on. And, on. and the reason for this, and the person gets confused. I mean, what is all this? I think the reason maybe for this confusion is the kind of approach that we take towards meditation, because almost all the time, the first question that one asks 
is in this respect is how to meditate. Please teach me how to meditate. Tell me how to meditate or read books, how to meditate, which in a way implies that we already know what uh, meditation can do for us. And by doing meditation, what all things we will gain. And now we just want a technique, a method. And now we are just looking for a person, a book to teach us some method which will give us peace of mind, remove all our obstacles in life and etc. Cetera, et cetera. And methods, we all know, can be infinite because there are in so many number of people, everybody can develop their own method. And hence, there are so many types and forms of meditation which we see. But the more fundamental question if we ask, if the more fundamental question if we ask that why meditate? Is it to get peace of mind or stress management to escape from our daily struggles of life, to acquire some psychic powers, to do some physical mental healing? to develop some spiritual authority over others, to activate chakras or uh, kundalini in some way. I'll just uh, make Smita Boho so she can monitor the mics. So, or without even knowing what all of this means. <clears throat> and there have been schools, there are schools which can raise the kundalini in so many thousands of rupees in one day, two day course or three day course or something like that. Or we want to do meditation because it's just fashion these days to meditate because it has been introduced in the companies, in the multinational companies, offices, everywhere. So let's just do it. Or there is a sincere thirst in us to know ourselves, to know the root of all these things that are happening, not just the superficial silencing of the mind, not just superficial, superficially removing the, uh, trimming the branches, but to know the root of all the things, to know one's true nature without any conditionings. And then depending on why we want to meditate will depend what direction we, will, we are going to take. And it's not that any direction is right or wrong, because as we in theosophy understand that everyone is different. And that's why in theosophical society and literatures, we don't find any method of meditation. There are such many recommendations or many suggestions to observe breath, to be aware of our action, emotions and thoughts, but it's not like a method or a technique that one should do or one should must do. So at whatever level or whatever understanding of the person is, they may take the lead and whatever the cons consequences are, they will realize or correct themselves. There is also a diagram of meditation by HPB. But as far as I understand, more than meditation, that diagram is actually preparation for meditation. So, because meditation for somebody can be an act that we do morning, evening, afternoon, a method or technique and life goes on. Or meditation can be a state of being in which we see the things clearly, not quoting J. Krishnamurti, not quoting Ashtavak, but they are using the simple words, just, you know, everybody wants to see the truth. That's the basic uh, human uh, uh, instinct that we want the truth. I mean, we don't want a liar to be our friend. We, Although we may lie to people for different reasons, but we want others to tell us the truth because we want to know the truth. So simple human instinct to know the truth. And that's why all these people, they say how to see the truth because there are so many barriers. So that process of removing the, those barriers 
has taken of has taken a word meditation and the word meditation it comes from latin word meditare in 16th century implying contemplation observation even to ponder and to heal in sanskrit dhyana means that comes from the root dhye means to contemplate and the root of that dhye is the word di which implies buddhi or pragya or faculty of direct perception not the mind but something beyond mind or when the mind is enlightened with the light of buddhi then the mind actually as a vehicle or as a means as a tool can see the things directly which is called pratyaksh gyan is called pragyan direct perception and that's from there the term developed into the variant dhya and then dhyana or meditation and also a more common meaning of the word dhyana is attention like when we tell people pay attention dhyan do i mean give your attention to something but mostly that attention if the thing is of our interest we without any prompt from outside our attention is 100% but when that attention when the thing is not of our uh, interest then that attention is not 100% which is why all these uh, times we are recommended to uh, remove the distractions also there is just like we did the prayer in the beginning oh hidden light oh hidden light oh hidden love similarly the word contemplate are there are sutras or aphorisms which or the thoughts for meditation thoughts for meditation that at least we begin to concentrate first and give paying attention to us uh, to something and removing our attention from other places to mahavakyas let's say aham brahmasmi tatvamasi ayam atma brahman pragyanam brahman or o oh, hidden life something like that so when we begin to put our mind to this contemplate on this we get a quality of mind that is ready for meditation because then by layer by layer are removed and then the mind is able to see clearly so today also the meditation guided meditation that we are going to have by brother vik hao chen it's his uh, recorded video and now brother vik hao chen uh, junior as you all know he has been the he has been distinguished theosophist of global renown he has a past president of the theosophical society in the philippines and founder and chairman of the golden link school in the philippines and also he has been working in close connect with the arya theosophical academy which is a center for transformative education in arya and the many of the many of us who know the book mahatma letters to ap singhet he has uh, published it in the chronological order and he has been a very big contributor in theosophical encyclopedia which is a very great book covering many aspects of theosophical literature he is an author and he has written the books why you meditate and the process of self transformation on which he regularly conducts the workshops so now uh, without any further um, distraction let us all come together and uh, follow this guided meditation and this is just although he will mention this for beginners and this is not something that has to be taken as something final or static as we all know this is just to have a glimpse into the process you can slightly modify or change or 
basically anything that can help the mind to be integrated, you can use. Anything that removes the fragmentation of the mind. If you think by concentrating, if you think sitting on a chair, if you think sitting cross-legged, if you think eyes closed, if you think eyes open, if you think uh, with the nature, if you think in a closed room, whatever you think you experiment on yourself and then can follow, you can improvise it for yourself. So let us all come together in this meditation session. And I will share the speed now. Just uh, Smita, let me know if the voice, audio, video are coming good. And then I will restart. Is it okay? I will start by explaining the procedure that we are going to use in our group meditation. We are going to use a classic approach to meditation. As many of you are familiar, meditation has at least two major levels. The first level would be the taming process, which is the preparatory process, which enables us to tame the jumping monkey mind. The second level is meditation proper, which is called dhyana in the Yoga Sutras. And there, even if we don't use any kind of mantra or counting, a person would be able to sustain one's awareness there. We will start with the taming process, which is we will make use of counting. I'll explain the procedure. And then for those among you who are already very experienced in meditation, you can go on and do meditation proper. You already know what to do. And you may not need to go into the counting anymore. So what is the counting process? It is a standard classic approach wherein which we deal with a jumping monkey mind. Whenever we quiet our mind, you will notice that the mind would keep on going to many things your worries, your concerns for tomorrow, the ideas that you have, the things that you like or dislike, they go to these things. But during meditation, and we will do it for about 20 minutes today, we will just tame our mind and allow the mind to focus on one object or one theme. And we are going to use First is awareness of the breathing, and then the use of counting. When we breathe in normally, not deep breathing, but normal breathing, then you mentally count one. And when you breathe out, you mentally count two. When you breathe in, mentally count one, and breathe out, mentally count two. If some of you find that even this exercise of counting one and two seems difficult, meaning your mind keeps on going back to many things still, then there is a preliminary approach which can you, you, you can use. And this is for the out breath, you count up to 50. So breathe in, count one, breathe out, count one, breathe in, count one, and breathe out, count two. Breathe in one, breathe out three. You do this until you go up to 50 and you can start all over again to one and so on. 
you'll find that this will make it easier for you to stay in the practice of the meditation. In our group meditation right now, what we are going to do is that I'll start with some preliminary guidelines, particularly relaxing ourselves, and then I will go into silence of approximately 20 minutes. And during these 20 minutes, you do the meditation process, the counting, or the awareness itself. And then every about two minutes, I will make use of a bell, which is this one. And the purpose of the bell is that in case you are lost again in your thoughts, thinking of many other things, then the bell will remind us to go back to the counting or to the meditation. If your mind goes away a hundred times, then just gently bring it back a hundred times. After our meditation, I'll be sharing with you some thoughts on the practice of meditation, and then we're going to go into a discussion, a question and answer period, where we may, we may want to clarify certain things about the practice of meditation and living the higher life. So now you may choose to close your eyes or to keep them half open. And we will begin by becoming aware of our physical body. The breathing is normal. Let your spine be straight. Body rested and comfortable. Each time you breathe out, be aware of your body and your limbs, your arms and legs, and allow them to become relaxed and restful. As you breathe out, let the body become relaxed. If you feel any discomfort in your body, be aware of it as you breathe in and be aware of your arms and legs as you breathe out. And as your body becomes more and more fully relaxed, you will notice that the emotions also become quiet and calm. Now, let us be aware of our mind. Notice the thoughts coming in and out, coming and going. Do not stop them or fight them. Just be aware of them without rejecting them, but without entertaining them. Just be aware. And that's, as you watch your mind, you will notice that our consciousness has a space. It is a space where all thoughts and experiences come. Now 
is that space is awareness. Noticing thoughts and sensations and feelings without judgment, just being aware. Now, let us be aware now of our breathing. As we breathe in, mentally say one, and as we breathe out, mentally say two.
sustaining this inner awareness. Let us now be conscious of the sounds around us. Sustaining this inward awareness, let us now be conscious of our physical sensations, including our emotions. Sustaining this inward awareness, let us gently open our eyes and be conscious of our physical surroundings. Aware of the world without and aware of the space within. If we begin to move our physical body, try to be aware that we are about to move them and be aware when we are moving any part. Try to sustain this quality of inner awareness throughout the rest of the day. An awareness that just watches, does not condemn, does not judge, does not like or dislike, just being aware. Welcome back, everyone. I know it's uh, in this stage, nobody would like to talk and just continue in the silence or awareness, as Brother Week said, of the space within and the world without. So later on, when you are more expressive physically in words, please send us your feedback about this session and we'll try to do it regularly once a month in a different manner, live meditation also. And now we'll close the meeting with a prayer for the welfare of everyone. Oh, 
Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Galam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavanti Sukhinam Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Mataschit Dukh Bhagpave Om Shanti 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 Namaste. See you next time. I'll end the meeting. Have a great insightful day and be present. Thank you. Thank you.